Okay, welcome back to my channel. So today's project started off with a quick trip to Pottery Barn Outlet to buy some cushions for um, outdoor loungers. So we wanted to make two single outdoor loungers and then a double lounger. So I looked up online and I found some plans that are Pottery Barn inspired single chase lounge chairs and uh, went to Home Depot and bought a bunch of wood. We decided this time around we're going to try to make this out of cedar. So originally we we're going to try some pressure treated lumber. The downside of pressure treated lumber is, for one, is you put a bunch of pressure treated lumber together and it's super heavy. And uh, but we wanted something that would weather really well. And so we went with what is a little bit more of a rougher cedar. You know, the nice thing, cedar wood, which is it's pretty smooth on one side. It's a little bit more rough on the on the back side of it. But we're going to use this side for uh, where we're putting the lounge chairs and that sort of thing. And so we got a bunch of wood. It doesn't look like much, but this should basically make two single loungers. So, first time I've ever made lounge chairs, so this is going to be kind of a um, touch and go situation here. We'll see how it works out. Roughly the wood and the materials that we needed here were roughly $340 uh, for all the lumber. So $340 should get us two chairs. Um, we, didn't, we didn't get any wheels or anything for them yet because we're not going to really wheel ours around that much. Uh, so we're going to kind of debate whether we need those or not. We might just get some fit footings put in. But So the lounge chairs should look like this little picture. And I will put this picture, this design plan on um, a link below. So the reason we're making a go at making these is because um, even at Pottery Barn or even Pottery Barn Outlet, we're talking anywhere between seven to 850 per chair um, to be completely done. So 340 for two chairs in a little bit of effort and uh, maybe get the kids to help and, and have some fun doing it. Um, really pretty good, pretty much a good deal. So we got that really put together and we got chair cushions that are going to be perfect because they are Pottery Barn so you won't even know the difference. So I'll probably stamp Pottery Born on the bottom just as a knockoff so people will think that's a real thing. Anyways, at the end of the day uh, we're going to see how this turns out and we'll give you some progress as we go along. The first thing I'm going to do is this, these instructions are pretty, pretty nice. You can go through and it gives you a full cut list. So I'm really, really, really hoping that this cut list is super accurate because I'm going to go through and cut all these, uh, all this wood, measure twice, cut once. That's a rule of thumb. So anyways. We'll start assembling and we'll let you know where we're going from there. So I'm making sure just to uh, give it a little bit more rigidity, if that's a word. Um, rigidness, I'm, gonna, I'm gluing all the joints. And they say to use a pocket drill for all these interior pieces. Um, the ones I can't see that much, um, I'm drilling with uh, regular exterior drill deck screws. Um, I think it actually gives it more um, strength to it. Some of the jig stuff looks great and you don't want to see the holes and where you're drilling and things like that. But um, ultimately, I think a lot of times when you use those Craig um, drill holes into that, you don't get as much um, strength as you would if you went through um, the outside piece of wood and into the second piece of wood. And so then I'm also using glue just to give it some more, more strength. So, Okay, we're finishing up the second base of um, our lounger. So the first one's going to look like this. We're making the second one that looks like that as well. Okay, so a quick update on where we're at. So the instructions are just okay. So we'll clearly give you a link to the instructions. It gets you to what it kind of looks like. And then you gotta start improvising a little bit and what you need to get done. So um, what we did to be a little bit different here is we didn't go through and use a Craig um, jig to do all these backboards, which would give you all these screws on the bottom, but would give you nothing on your face of your, your chair whatsoever. What we did is we decided we were going to nail them. So we used a nailer, got a nailer, so might as well use it. We went through and we nailed all these in, and because this isn't going to move anyway, this is the basically the base of the chair where you're going to sit. So we're going to fill these in with a little bit of putty. It's all going to get stained. It's got a cushion going over it. So we want it to look really, really nice, of course, but we also, you know, doing all those the jigs. We didn't, first of all, we didn't have a jig. And second of all, um, I actually think this is going to give it a lot more rigidness to the chair itself. Like you see, these are in really, really well. 
So we glued them, we nailed them, so that should give us a good, good amount of support on this and it allows us to kind of move a little bit quicker too once we get going. So we got that done and then the last part of this that we have to do is we're going to connect what we did here, which is our header piece. So here's the mistake we made with the header piece. A um, couple things. One, we, uh, we put extra supports in, which seemed like a really, really good idea. Um, except for the fact that our nail gun's got some superpowers to it. So even though the nails look like they wouldn't go through, they went through. Um, so that kind of sucks. Not a big deal. We bent them down. I'll probably do some kind of decorative piece over it. Just get a strip of something over it. Just to cover it, glue it, stain it so you won't see it. But they're not sharp. We bent them all down. It's not a big deal. So we just have some... Just... Honestly, if you're a perfectionist, you're like myself, you're going to be upset about that. Um, but you'll get over it because you have no choice. So anyways, that's it. We're going to put the hinges in and then we're going to show you this whole thing working, hopefully. Okay. So here we are, it's dark out, tired. But we have one chair, minus the legs, put together. So right now it's a, it's a legless chair, but it is a very nice legless chair and so far it works. So it's not stained for stained and filled, holes aren't filled. And we still got hours of work to do on this thing and we have one of them done. But I think we figured out all of the problems that we ran into. So for one is the directions are really not good. So it looks really good. So you get the, the, the frame was really nice. The base of it tells you how to do the base. The back of it, it, it doesn't, you know, doesn't tell you jack crap. So we did some trial and error on the back. First thing we did is, which is really just stupid on our part, is we connected this lower. So when I originally sat on it, I pulled the whole board off and uh, that didn't really work out. And I didn't even put all the weight on it. And then, you know, just so you can see a little bit better. Um, then this actually works pretty slick. So you can go all the way under, and if you go all the way under, obviously it's going to lay all the way flat. So it lays completely flat. It's nice, right? So it does that. Um, and then as you raise it up, anywhere you want to stop, you get three positions. Full upright, laying just a little bit, and then laying a little bit more. Kind of made up our own here is doing our, our own legs for each of the loungers. So um, we used a two by four, a treated piece of two by four on the back side of this, as you can see by this. And so this is a seven inch two by four that fits really pretty perfect here. Uh, seven inch for the, the front here. We did nine inches in the back and we put them up a little bit further because that's where a lot of your weight's gonna be at. But we did seven in the front and then we made sure it was level. So we put the red level on it, made sure the top part of this is really, really level and made sure it's got good stability to it. But I didn't really like the look of the treated two by four under here that's in there. It's nice and secure in there. But so what I did is I took one of the pieces that we had left over from um, the six inch cedar and I basically made a wrap for it. So when you put it in there, it'll be for that side. And then I overlaid it here. And so it'll make a nice, nice corner. And when we sand it down, it'll be even more perfect. But it makes a nice corner just like that. And we're gonna do that to all four corners, and that way from the front and side stuff that looks really kind of nice and it's really simplified, but it has really good strength to it. We did a couple different modifications to this to make it a little bit better for our needs. Um, so we wanted to add this, this piece in here um, because we didn't want this to drag on the ground and be ugly from underneath. Like so if you were sitting there looking at it, this would be resting on the ground and that really just doesn't look that good. So we wanted to make this piece so this piece never rested on the ground. So what, when we did that, it basically wasn't strong enough to actually hold up this piece because this is a lot of weight with the wood in there and then with the supports in there and that sort of thing. So we wanted to give it a little bit more, um, more strength to it. So we added a cross piece in it and we just basically centered it along these things. We added a cross piece in so we, we added a screw in from underneath for this. And then we had to give it a little bit extra spacing. So we put in some spacers here. We gave it a little bit of extra spacing so that way this could lay flat because these are two by twos and we needed to have enough distance between here and here as well as the fact that this wasn't going to lay completely flat so we wanted to give it that distance so now when you actually come in if you just had the chair and you wanted to lay flat on it you could do that there there we go as you can see don't get your fingers in there it lays completely flat and now underneath that piece is hidden so if you're laying flat under there you don't see that piece under it at all 
and it gives it a little bit better, cleaner look to it. So let me try that one more time in a little bit more nice fashion here. So this is upright, of course, locks in, you're laying against it, you're having a lovely day in a cocktail. This gives you a little bit further back, of course, and a little bit further back, of course. If you want to go completely flat, you can do that, you tuck that under, boom, you're laying completely flat. It actually gives it a lot more support too, both this way and it gives you more support every which way you're looking at. So it's really kind of a nice, uh, nice addition to this, I think. Okay, the last really step in this is we took and we got some just general wood putty. Um, we got some wood putty, filled in all these little nail holes that we did with our, our auto nailer and any kind of imperfections we had. We had a little bit of gapping or we had a dent in a piece of wood. I went through and filled all those in. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use my quick orbit sander and I got 150 grit, it's very fine. Uh, you can get 220, you can get you know even finer if you want. But this is a nice, nice sandpaper, I think, and it'll give us a, we'll sand this down real quick, run the sander over the whole top of it, then we'll worry about staining it, and then this one's really done. And the other one's almost done as well. So did the exact same thing on that one as we did on this one, and, uh, and that's it. We are gonna throw a coat of stain on these. We're gonna use the same stain we used on our deck. It worked out really well. It's an oil-based stain. It's a woodland oil. Uh, we're gonna use mahogany because we felt that that went really well. So uh, we're gonna do the inside first because it's the most seen. Then we'll do the outside, and then uh, we'll flip it over and do anything that we see that's remaining. Um, pretty much, we want to make sure all the, the first surfaces that you see when you walk up to them are, are really good. Plus, we want to make sure the tops are really good because that's the side that's gonna be out in the rain and the elements. And so uh, we got, this is an oil base too, so it's a little bit more difficult to work with. But at the end of the day, um, I feel like the oil base is really the best way to go because uh, you get a lot more protection from it and you'll see a lot more beaded water off of it, which means things aren't soaking into it. So um, here we go. Okay, so here we have one chair, completely uh, stained with the uh, woodland oil. This is Olympic Elite. It's uh, oil based, it's woodland oil based. This is in the mahogany, so this should actually match our deck when it all kind of fades together. So we use the same stain, so we didn't have multiple stains out there uh, for every different thing. So as you can see, here's the one that's stained, and if you turn around, um, you'll quickly see the one that we haven't stained yet that's raw wood. So it's raw cedar on this side, on my left side, and on the right side, it's the mahogany that we have. Um, so it looks really pretty nice, so we're going to set out in the sun for a little while. We're going to let it kind of bake in before we put our cushions on it, because our cushions are a tan, so we don't want to do that. One thing, the quick note. Cautiously use wood glue when you're doing this project. So wood glue doesn't stain that well. Um, so just to know that, um, I knew that kind of going into it, so we were pretty careful about where we put it. Uh, but there's still some spots where you have wood glue that it doesn't take as well. The other thing is um, wood putty. It will never take the stain just quite the same as wood does. So if you look really closely here, where we had some gapping and just whatever. If you look close, you'll see it. Um, not that big a deal for us. Uh, I don't mind that much because we're gonna put a cushion on it for most of the time. Uh, but just something to kind of take note of is if you plan to put big holes in it and try to pat patch them in with some wood, wood filler, it probably won't take the stain quite the same way, even though it says it's stainable. So just a quick note. Okay, so here is the finished product for the single loungers. So I think they turned out really great. We already did the the showing you the raw being stained. Here's what the Pottery Barn cushions that we got. So we got these from Pottery Barn Outlet. So the Pottery Barn cushions, and it's just a, it's a mimic or a kind of a mimic of what the Pottery Barn lounge chair looks like in a single. So next up, we're gonna do a video on showing you how to build a double. So we're going to get the wood for that. We're gonna build out the double, and we got another Pottery Barn cushion for that one as well. So we're gonna get that going. And uh, if you have any comments, questions, um, shoot them to us. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe to us and we will show you more videos as we go.